you know, with shells today was a normal practice for us. Uh, obviously, technique and fundamentals at a premium, but uh, for us, situational football, um, just playing extended drives, putting us in, in difficult situations and working all our special teams phases were part of practice today, as well as all the technical and physical work that goes with block destruction, the line of scrimmage, uh, the front seven, the O-line, and the tight ends. Uh, but open the questions, please. Coach, uh, it's obviously not like Jacoby did anything egregiously wrong or, ra or robbed a freight train, but in light of the three personal foul penalties late in the season, did you give any thought to removing him from the roster, or was he a guy you just felt like, I wanted to invest more time in? Just, just, just your thinking. I think initially, yeah, that comes to mind right away because it's not part of the DNA of the program. It's not what we want to be as a program. And then you also have to stop for a second and think, well, it's your job to find a way to get it right until you can't get it right. Uh, and we've invested a lot in him, and there's been a lot of growth and development, and it's time for that to show as a teammate, as uh, a guy who's completely committed to being the best he can be to help the team win. And I believe we're heading in the right direction, and I think he knows that. Um, and I think this is going to end really well with him. So that's uh, the path we have chosen to take. And so, you know, but I understand the question. It's always something that comes to the forefront when dealing with a team and culture. You got to get it right, and we're committed to doing so. Coach, third spring season here for you. How important is it for you to uh, make a step forward here? And what's the comparison from uh, year one for you? Oh, well, it's very different. I think, uh, you know, there's been a, a pretty massive roster overhaul. Um, and an implementation of a culture, a regiment, and structure, and one that we really believe in, and one that we've had tremendous success at every stop that we've been at, and one that has been making steady progress for about 23, 24 months now, um, actually a little bit more. And this spring, we've gotten off to a really, really good start. And, and you see it in the intangibles as much as anything else, taking care of your business in the classroom, uh, making sure that you're holding your teammates accountable to be early to everything, understand the playbook and not only what to do, but how to do it and doing it at a certain level of intensity of effort. So I think all those, all those things are coming together. And I think a lot of it is sparked by competition. I think competition a lot of times fixes a lot of things. I don't think pads on now. Um, are any guys standing out, seeing the guys you know, making big plays, you know, seeing guys get real physical? Well, one thing we talked about today is playing time here doesn't, uh, it doesn't discriminate, you know? I think guys like Cam Pruitt have shown early that uh, he's, he's a very physically gifted guy, like a flat out get after it, understands football really well, concepts. And Saquon Patterson really stands out as a young guy that he just gets it. He's played for a long time at a high level, is doing really well. Elijah Lofton, um, just, you know, now he's a big guy, 250 plus pounds, fits right in. Um, so many veterans are there. There's a lot of guys that are doing really, really well, which has made practice good because of the competition. JoJo really stands out. You know, you mentioned Jacoby early. He's had a really good, really good spring. Um, I would say um, Isaiah Horton really stands out as a guy that really has come along. Zach Carpenter, um, Coop keeps getting better and better. McCoy um, we've had some guys to step up and roll. Wesley Bessaint's had a really big spring. Really excited about his progress because now he's weighing 228, 230 pounds. Uh, he's running like he did when he was 170, and he's, he just he understands. He understands, and he's playing like he understands. So there's a good amount of guys. I've probably missed a few, but they'll get sensitive, but I'll handle them later, I guess, you know. What has Jim Ward shown since the pads have come on? He's tough. He's physical. Um, he's a relentless competitor. He's everything you want in an offensive lineman and a linebacker, except he's really super talented. Um, he doesn't take it for granted. He's very humble, yet competitive. He is not afraid to take a stand as a leader uh, in terms of accountability, holding himself accountable, holding his teammates accountable, which is critically important as a quarterback, right? You want that guy to be a total alpha dog, and he is. And he's in a room with, with alphas, and I think that it's contagious. So, so far, the part that really stands out for him is, is as all those things combined, plus he's really hungry. Like, if you get to the building, Whatever time you get to, he'll be the first one here. I think two guys that everyone feels compassion for are Zion and Travante with the knees and the travails they've gone through. With Travante, have you seen flashes of pre-injury? And with Zion, I know you addressed this a couple weeks ago, mm -hmm. is there hope in your mind that he could play for you again this fall? Oh, good question. Today is when Travante, something clicked today. You know, because we've been seeing a guy that's been a little bit tentative. And then 
kind of a flash, but today there was a legitimate a guy running behind his pads, running at 2.30, uh, accelerating, running through contact, running his feet through contact, catching the ball really well out of the backfield. Today was his best day. Today is, um, is something that really that gives us hope that he can return to form. With Zion, it's been a wait and see. I know he's really frustrated. We all feel for him, always in, in our prayers and thoughts, and just hoping he gets better. I know he's trying, but uh, that'll be up to, to him and his medical situation, whether it can happen or not. With Elijah Lofton, his ability physically and mentally mm -hmm. to play different positions, mm -hmm. how unique is that as an early and early freshman? You wish you had a bunch of them. You know, because the truth of the matter is, I, I personally think if he was a linebacker, he'd go over there right now and give everybody a run for their money. That's how much uh, faith we have in him as a freshman, and the fact you know he's uh, comes from Bishop Gorman, where you know it's very high standards, like a lot of the program guys that are here, and uh, he just it, he's exceeded expectations, um, and we've thrown a lot at him, a lot, and so. Um, Pretty fired up about the guy, so I forgot the question completely. But it's, you know, we talked a lot about Ruben Bain last year, you know, early on, and guys like that, and Francis. And when you start talking about Elijah, you feel feel a little bit the same way. You obviously have a lot of young linebackers with a lot of ability. Yes, Two veteran ones with Francisco and with Wesley, and Chase, who has some experience. It's still early, but do you have a feel like whether the youth has made enough progress where you don't need another veteran just in the room for depth, or is it too early to tell you that? It's always too early to tell. I mean, guys that, that we failed to mention is Popo. Popo's had a great spring. Popo's been really physical, played downhill, knows the system really well, is, is has natural leadership qualities. Uh, I think Adarius Hayes has had a great spring so far. Pulliam has flashed. Uh, Caleb Spencer, we've kind of bounced him around back and forth at the boundary safety position and at linebacker. And then Chase Smith, you know, he's, he's been exceptional on special teams, and we've been moving him inside and outside. So there's been some good competition there. Um, you're always on the hunt, and you have to be, and really at every single position. And we need to be, and we're going to be very, very aggressive. And I think when uh, the guys have had a chance to meet some of our players and watch some of them, and I think they want to play with some of these guys, you know, so hopefully it'll be a good portal season for us. With the headset communication now mm -hmm. being a thing, how's that process been? Oh, yeah. It's been good. Just be careful what you say last, right? Because that's probably what's going to happen. So we've been working it since day one. Even while we were waiting for the technology to get here, I mean, it looked like the old school days with like pagers and beepers and all that stuff and headsets. And But our coordinators, um, they've gotten really used to it. Um, the iPad technology is something we've dabbled in, but more extensively we'll get into it next week because that is now part of uh, college football. And it's a little bit different. There's a there's a port, right, and you got to plug your stuff into the server, and then you detach them and use them. Um, there's no data in them just to play themselves, but you're you're seeing stuff in, like you would in a film room. And so using it to, your, to our advantage and, and I'm certainly preparing for opponents to use it to their advantage too are critically important to our preparation now because Come fall, you know, you're going to have 29 practices and you need, you need a couple more now. Do you think it'll change the game in terms of like execution or just, just We'll find holes, you know. Yeah. You'll see things that, um, you know, tells. You always look for tells, you know, on tape. You know, the slightest adjustment, alignment, physical disposition, you know, leverage can lead to a different call, uh, can lead to player awareness as it relates to a call. There's a lot of teaching that goes with it. and. You know, and at the same time, you got to be careful to not over inundate your guys with information. So uh, we talk a lot to the NFL guys and how they use it, and it's also about the pros and cons. Having Kenny Dorsey here yesterday was huge. He spoke at uh, our clinic, and he really he went in depth about what he likes about it, what he doesn't, what he would do, and what he wouldn't do with it. And for us, it was very educational.